We all trained in Big Bear, right here in Southern California. Sure, I went up the there. Mountains, yeah. Right, yeah. In, I was up uh, there. In Big Bear. And it's funny because we would always cross each other, um, like his posse and my posse. We would always cross each other during, like, morning runs, you know? Oh, and God. it was kind of like fucking, uh, what's that? What's that movie where they're like fucking with knives and shit? Like, you know? It's like West Side Story. West Side Story. We didn't the have sharks knives, running dude, by each other. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. I got to go to that dry cleaner here. My kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore, Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Are you a gambler? I am. I I, I like gambling. I, I the way I eat, fuck every day is a gift. <laughs> we see you cheering on the sideline, not you guys. We're at home. Uh, get into action this season with my bookie. Head to mybookie.ag and bet on the NFL lock of the season. You could win big. Go to mybookie.ag and use code OMGHI. That's oh my god high to instantly receive double your first deposit. That's double your funds to double your winnings at mybookie.ag with code OMGHI. Oh my God, hi. I think it makes looking at sports more fun when you're doing this. And actually, one of my chefs after I won the Olympic Games was one of the guys that beat his ass down. Yeah, it was fucking hilarious, man. They would have kicked his ass. They would have killed him, right? If they had oh, the, good, the, the good guys. <laughs> The good guys got him. If it had been the bad guys, if it had been the guys from the barrio, they'd have killed him. What do you mean, good guys got him? Yeah, it wasn't the hood rats. It wasn't. It wasn't the gang members that got him. So you don't think a good guy, he tried. He tried to steal this woman's car. Most of them. That activates every Latino over there. It, it I was saying Chicanos, but they're like it, from it, Mexico. It, they hit him in the head. The husband hit him in the head. The guy's tired. He's been running at a sprint over fences, over the sound walls, for a couple of miles. He's out of it. There was no, and and they didn't beat him. You know, they 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 put him down. Okay, so this is his this is Richard Ramirez morning. So he he goes to Arizona to go see his brother. His brother won't yeah. see him. So he gets on the Greyhound and comes back. Now he's been gone what three days? Three days. He left on Wednesday. And he came so back. he gets in Saturday morning. He gets off the Greyhound bus right there in L.A. Uh-huh. and he looks. And a criminal really knows what's going on. You know, yeah, so, so he okay. looks. And he sees shit. He's like, you know, there's some cops in here. Right. So he goes out of not the exit, but he slides out. The way the buses come in, that's the way he went out, which was not open to the public. And so the he, cops weren't back there. He went out where the buses come in. Then he went to the grocery store and he saw L'Opinion. But, you know, <laughs> L'Opinion had news. No, yeah. L'Opinion. They could tell yeah. the future. So oh, okay. so he sees it. He sees his picture on there. Goes to the liquor store. This lady says what? No, she said, well, she didn't see him. He recognized himself. Oh. She didn't see him. Huh. Not until he got on the bus was he recognized on the bus. Then he started his running track. And that fool man ran from East Dallas. He ran across the freeway, ran into East Los. He was ID'd, he was ID'd at Olympic and Soto on the bus. Yeah, Olympic and Soto. He got off at yeah. Lorena and Soto. Oh, shit. Right, right there by Dude, uh, right there where I used V&E. to train. You yeah. probably ran that every morning when you were ready to get yeah. for the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nuevo, right? Yeah, Barrio Nuevo. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. And oh, then he ran through all the houses and over yeah. the five freeway. Yeah, right there where, uh, where fucking Will I Am used to live. Oh, no shit, that's yeah. where Will I Am used to live in the uh, projects right there. Damn, huh, crazy. Uh, so that is cruel. So they beat the shit out of him. And then he wow. tried to. Uh, he was pretty. Beat, he was yeah. pretty run down though. He, he was run down. They gave him a coscoron with a <laughs> with a pipe, right? With a pipe. Well, that was my chef. Oh, is that right? Yeah, who gave him the fucking <laughs> with, the, with, the pi- with the pipe. He went over yeah. and pulled out the thing from the fence. <laughs> all right, cabron. Well, you know, the bad people all have guns and everything. The good people have pipes, pipa tire, yeah. piece of wood, a yeah. baseball bat. And wait, they wait, didn't. What, what about the? What about you mentioned the Oscar uh, the, little the knife rats, by the window? The hood rats. The hood rats were still asleep. Oh no, not the hood. The hood rats, because the hood rats are are the little uh, cholas the, that I used to the, mess well, with. They, these are the, the cholos, the, the guys, <laughs> the, the gang members from the barrio. Okay. They're they're still in bed. It's too early for them. <laughs> they they didn't uh, they didn't get them at That's all. True. Or unless you're just getting in from fucking baby yeah. those. Uh, exactly. <laughs> if they would have been there, if they'd have been there, they'd have killed them. Hey, you're already married, but did you ever go to baby those? Yeah, yeah, I want to baby this. Cochino. 
You couldn't I, go in there and not get laid. Hey, I had to go in there on. Uh, they would say, hey, did you business. get laid? Not till I, I struck out. Hey, bring one over here. <laughs> wait a minute. My no, wife, it was so dark in, in there. In case my wife's listening, <laughs> I went there on official business. I was a cop, remember? That used to be our area before they annexed it over to Monterey Park. I wish I was a cop. I would be like, I thought, like uh, the bad lieutenant. <laughs> I would just walk in with the badge. Can I talk to you for a second? Quítate la ropa, cabrón. What? And your wife, too. What? Okay, you. And your wife, too. Go over in the corner and lay down. Put your uh, nose in the corner. And you, come on, turn around three times. Let me see. Andale. Oh, that's fucking funny. I would already scratch my number out. You know how every badge had a number there. I would already scratch it. <laughs> I would have took Oscar's knife by the window. I would have just started scratching the number out. Yeah, so make, the numbers. Th- make the eight a three. Oh, yeah. Detect that three, three, one. Uh, baby those was a place. Um, yeah. So, so... Oscar De La Hoya now, you know. Uh, Wait, how do we start talking about Richard Ramirez? We already started talking about it. Oh. Just because of him. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, do you think, well, this is, there's another one. So Richard Ramirez was evil. No question about evil. But after he got caught, yeah. he, he became quiet, right? Yeah, and how, and how come? Because like reborn? Because he no no <laughs> no he didn't talk to anybody. You know he, he had he got caught. To he me. had gotten caught. He got caught. He, he knew he was going to get caught. He was tired of running. And yeah. then we established some kind of rapport uh, because I spoke the lingo. I spoke the vernacular. And uh, so it was it was all right, you know. And orale, orale, you know. And yeah. What, they made a big deal out of it when we went to court. Uh, we went to court one day. He walked in. He looked at me. Said orale Carrillo. And the reporters went nuts. And the only one that understood what he said was Tony Valdez from Channel Love. Mm. And he stood back and he laughed and he came and did an interview with me. They were wondering, hey, was that a death threat? What was he saying? And Because we got along fine. Okay, so you said that you said that Richard Ramirez had like chemistry, like he had a magnetism that women, when they saw him, oh, shit, I heard about they, that. They, they, they wanted to. Yeah, there were right? women that followed him, loved Didn't him. Didn't they marry him or something? One of them <laughs> yeah. got married to him. Fucking, fucking crazy. <laughs> Dude, she had to be a fucking hood rat. <laughs> <laughs> she was an uh, ugly hood rat. Okay, so if 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 Richard Ramirez could pull women, what do you think Oscar could pull? Oh, dude. This is about the still perpetually handsome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm ready to throw Everything. my guns on his head. This dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, tell me, tell me the story you told me on the talk show when that lady threw her oh, underwear. Dude. I was, I was thinking the, about that. And when they got in the air, they got bigger. And it, was like she, <laughs> it was like a fucking parachute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking, I, 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 I'm fighting in El Paso, right, at the Sun Bowl. Fucking 80,000 people. Let me say this. Hey, Richard was probably yeah. there. <laughs> probably, let me say this. Yeah. In my talk show in the two years, there was a lot of surprises. Him coming out and doing what would be comedy for 20 minutes, and they went crazy. I mean, I don't funny. think I was more surprised by how funny a person could be <laughs> than Oscar telling those stories. He got good stories, man. I, <laughs> a lot of shit, man. All right, so, so he's fighting that. Yeah. I remember that fight, too. Yeah. Outside El at the Paso. Sun Bowl that, oh, in, the, in that. Um, so El Paso's just fucking, you know, fucking just going crazy, you know? And and so 80,000 women are at the at, at the Sun Bowl, right? And so um, I land the week of the fight. It's like Wednesday. You know, you have a press conference and the way and then the fight Saturday. So we land, boom, and then we see all these people there behind the fence. They're like waiting for me, fucking just yelling, oh, Oscar, oh, yeah. And so my PR people are like, dude, don't even fucking run across the tarmac and don't even go to those people. And what do I do? I fucking run across the tarmac mm-hmm. and, you know. Yeah. So I'm signing autographs. Da, da. We're having fun. You Just know, out of curiosity, yeah. are you Latino? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're having fun signing autographs, da, da, you know. And then, you know, they throw, they throw hats. Sign my hat. They start throwing shirts. You know, oh, sign my shirt. I'm, you know, whatever. I'll sign whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, they start throwing bras. So we're like, fucking, fucking, hey, dude. <laughs> I haven't seen a fucking bra in like two months from I'm train. training camp. <laughs> yeah. Probably fucking busted a nut right there, but. <laughs> 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 but. Uh, there so, goes his legs. So then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my left leg was like, oh, fuck. And then so the bras start flying over, you know, 35, 36D, whatever, boom, boom. it's not normal. He's <laughs> clocking it. <laughs> well, they're from El Paso, they're El Paso. Yeah. 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 So fucking weird sizes yeah. there. Yeah. And then so <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden from the back, <laughs> boom, and everything turned like slow motion. <laughs> and this fucking <laughs> parachute. I thought it was a par- I thought the fucking, the, 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 the fan fucking, man. the fan man was coming down. <laughs> <laughs> 
and fucking this thing, and everybody just goes, oh shit, <laughs> and it falls on the ground. Oh you know, like God. you know, like when a fucking like a like a little Kleenex falls, yeah. it goes, <laughs> 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 it just fucking falls on the, the ground, <laughs> and we're laughing. What the fuck? And so buddy gets it with a pencil, and he's like, who's this? Is? Turn around. And God bless her soul. She was she must have been like five hundred pounds. Oh. She goes, it's mine, and they're fucking just <laughs> flapping. <laughs> Everybody's like their hair is fucking going back. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking. It was a proud baby. Thing, man. It was the funniest thing, man. That was a, that was a good time. That was a good time. And uh, uh, um, how do you feel? How, you look you look amazing. I feel good, bro. Dude. I feel fucking. I feel good. I've been training for six months, man. Wow. Oh, wow. I find it hard I mean, to I believe know. to look at him right now that he's yeah, getting ready to get in the bro, fight. I feel that you have crazy, all this background bro. now. You're gonna. Yeah. You, you look good. You know. You know what I uh, what I what I really feel um, because. Tyson was my inspiration when I watched him fight against um, uh, uh, Roy Jones Jr. How do you think he looked though? I mean, I mean, when he was I, in the past, he looked he looked dude, for he 50, looked great for fifty. No, no. What is he? Fifty six. Fifty six. I thought he looked good. I thought he looked good against Roy Jones Jr. Who 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 boxes? Right. So Tyson, if he had him in front, he would have knocked him out. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So right. that that's what makes you kind of look slower and bad. When you have ah, to chase him, you know? Right, okay. Um, I thought he looked good, and then right away I said, you know what? I'm going to fucking do this, man. I'm going to do this before I get older. You know? So here I am, man. You're I feel warrior, fucking amazing, brother. man. I feel amazing. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not this, saying that I feel the same when I was in my prime. I shit you not, I feel better. Really? Wow. Well, yeah. That's amazing because, I mean, the one thing that people don't really understand about Oscar De Hoya's credentials as a fighter is how many how many titles have you won? Ten? Ten. ten. In six weight divisions, yeah. I mean, uh, maybe who else has done that? Uh, Pacquiao's, Pacquiao's the only one to have more. Yeah, Pacquiao. I That's mean, yeah. and he was, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, was that? What? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. He drank some of the... He drank some of your beer. <laughs> he drank. He might have been the tester. Because before he fought, he was throwing his calzones. <laughs> they would have landed like a Kleenex right there. But, uh, I mean, boxing is, you know, it's yeah. just such a, it's such a beautiful, I mean, if you think about, like, I wasn't famous when Oscar was in his prime, mm. but I would be in Vegas at different particular times. I Corte. It, it, oh. it was. I was in town. I quartet at, oh. at Harris, and I think we, somebody knew him. Oh. We called him, but the excitement yeah. of a of a boxing match that and a crazy. boxer that could make Las Vegas stand up and take attention was was Oscar. That was I mean, that that command of of women and of yeah. men and of yeah. celebrities and of yeah, the whole cool. world of boxing coming to Vegas sure. for that to see Oscar yeah, fight. That was pretty cool. It was. Um, you mentioned I quartet. Literally the only guy, I mean, the guy to hit the hardest I've ever been hit. Harder than my fucking mom even fucking spanking me with a fucking <laughs> ladrillo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Um, yeah, from Africa, from Ghana. Um, when, you, when, you, when you sign up to fight a guy like that, since you probably haven't been hit by him, yeah. do they tell you this guy hits hard? Yeah. Do they show you watch oh, the I video? Knew. I knew. And you know that somebody hits hard. Well, well the one thing that I pride myself... I always have is that I always fought the best. I always fought the toughest. I always fought them in their prime. I always fought, you know, that was my, it's like Mikey, you know, hey, give it to Mikey, he'll eat sure, it. Sure, sure. You know, I yep. was like that. I was like that um, with, with all fighters, you know. So when they told me, hey, there's this guy, I Corte, there's a choice of three guys. I Corte, uh, you know, two other guys. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I Corte, let's go, you know. So, so I knew right there and then that, yeah, this is going to be fucking tough, tough. Right, and it sure was, man. Twelve rounds of hell. <laughs> Fucking twelve rounds of 12 hell. Twelve rounds. You know, he he dropped me it. twice. I dropped him three times. <laughs> I almost had him out in the twelfth round, but it was like a Rocky movie. I hit him with like twenty punches. Still standing up, he was like this. Fucking throwing. Referee won't. Referee won't stop the fight. Referee won't stop the fight. Back then, they didn't stop fights. Like you know, now it's like fucking, they fucking sneeze on you and they stop the fight. <laughs> right. You know. And uh, yeah, it was a brutal fight, man. Brutal fight, but I loved it. Do do the do the referees stop the? Well, back then, they let you fight. 
Until and then they would, the criticize, they would criticize referees for saying yeah. that they let a guy... Yeah, they, they, they let him too long. Too like, long. you know, mm-hmm. what the fuck? It's a fight. It's a fight. What about uh, what about um, Meldrick Taylor and Chavez? Yeah, well, that was fucking way too long. That that <laughs> Actually, it wasn't because Taylor was... Do you remember him. that fight? Yeah. No. Meldrick Taylor was beating Chavez. Meldrick Taylor yeah. was an Olympian. Yeah, it's gold great, medalist. It's a great yeah. fight, huh? Oh, it's a, the, one of the best fights in the history he's fight, of the game. And he's fighting Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah, Chavez. He, and Taylor was beating up Chavez the whole fight. And the last round, Chavez got this energy that just, I mean, that's, that, that was Chavez. If you haven't seen oh, it, my gosh, you can yeah, watch it from yeah. the first yeah. round yeah. till the last. And it, it's oh, yeah. exciting until the end. Yeah. Make sure you watch it with Asusia. And uh, yeah, the whole. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> he had cracked his. He, he, he had, oh, it was nasty. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was bad. It was a good fight. Let's pick it up on YouTube. All right. Yeah, big time. Oh. There's some. There were some great fights. I mean, in that era of when he was fighting, oh, was, was was fighting was fighting. No MMA. Really? No, 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 no side hustles. Yeah, no, just was, boxing. And 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 what's crazy after that fight, the referee committed suicide. Really? I don't know for what reason. But they found him in his hotel room. Yeah. Wow. That, that night. Oh, wow. Crazy. So right after. Oh, right after. Whoa. Crazy shit. Was that a part of boxing like mobsters? Back then? In my time? Nah. I don't think so. I mean, you had Don King. Right. Who's not around anymore. I mean, he is, but he's not promoting. But I think that was the last of, like, the, the right. you know, the, the, the crooked, you know, dark side of boxing, you know? Yeah. Now you don't, you don't really... I mean, me being a promoter, I've never been approached by anybody, or I've never told any judges, "Yay, you know, you know, what's up?" Right? You know what I'm saying? It's right. never happened. It's never happened. But yeah, this sport, this sport is pretty crazy. When you started to get back into training, you said you've been training for six months. Um, <laughs> how did you? I mean, the one thing oh. about you is I can see you, and you can look one way, and then I see you again, and yeah. you look another way. Right. Yeah. But then I see you this way, and yeah. you look like right. you used to look when I used to go see the fights. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you look like you, you. Oh, it's crazy, man! It's like I, I, I feel I like turned back the clock. You know, all the shit, all the fucking shit, is just like the last ounce of shit is just out of my system. Right. Yeah. Just that took me six months. So looking forward to it coming up, coming up now. You know, less training. You only got two weeks. Oh left. yeah. Like, now, right now, it's like I have this week. It's like my last hard fucking week of just like you know and then the week of the fight it's just relax just chill so that's when you build up that's when you build up like the week of the fight like i can't be around you guys i, I can't I fucking can't this guy oh this guy he's gonna, yeah. get, his ass, he's gonna get his ass kicked if he's like yeah. 10 feet close to me yeah nine feet he's fucked so right. so it is so it is that you do become yeah, like you're gonna get COVID. like uh, <laughs> yeah he'll hit, he'll hit it and it'll, it'll leave the, but it, but you do get to where you're Almost like a caged animal, like yeah, you're just yeah. ready, oh, ready crazy. to go. Yeah, and what's crazy is I miss that feeling, man. Fucking, I can it. imagine. Fucking <clears> missed <throat> it, man. When I first, when I first went to the gym the first day six months ago, fuck, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't. The next day, I couldn't even get out of bed, man. It was crazy. It was like, like what the fuck am I doing? And you know, I have to say that that with all the bullshit that happens in life, and with that the kids grow up and yeah. and everything, and then you have your, you know, your your time when you were i mean if not in a, in a short list of the greatest fighters of all time and then to go back and be able to go back and do it again yeah. for you like exactly. like you know guys run alongside you in the morning or they do whatever yeah. but what well, when you get in there it's only you yeah. when you were a kid and you were starting and you had you know nerves about fighting yeah. and just with the gear and all that it's still just yeah. it's still just you oh, yeah. so to go back and know that now you say you feel like you did when you were in your prime. Right. That piece, that w- wherever it goes, right. it came back, right? Yeah. And yeah, now you, you got it. You, you know what's crazy is, um, like, people ask me, like, why are you doing it? Like, what, what's, what's going on? Like, why, you know, you don't have to. I mean, shit. I'm, I'm actually doing it for myself, you know? That's what I said. Because I've, yeah, and, and you hit it right on the head because everything that I've been doing is for everybody. I, I, you know, I perform for the world, mm-hmm. you know? And when I got my ass kicked from Manny Pacquiao 13 years ago, right, I retired. I retired because I got my ass kicked. Mm-hmm. I didn't retire because I wanted to retire, you know. So I'm, I'm in front of the Staples Center and there's fucking 
thousands of media and, and I'm saying and I'm crying reading a speech that somebody wrote for me. Um, it's my last fight. But in my head, I'm like, this is not what I want. This is not the way I want to go out, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it actually took me 13 years to have the balls and come back and say, you know what? I, I want to go out my way. You know? you know what I'm saying? Well, I was at the fight. I was at the Pacquiao fight, and I was at your retirement. The retirement was sad. Yeah. The retirement oh, out yeah. there, it, it, it was sad because Dude, I, you know? here's a guy that, for us in the community, is he's our hero. Sure. And to see him say goodbye and still look fresh. like that. Yeah, it was fresh, bro. It was, and you're just like. I, I never got into wars, it, you know, and I never got into, like, wars where, it was oh, tough shit, to he's doing a step. There was a lot of people were crying. We were all crying yeah. in there. Yeah. That's why nobody cried at my retirement. I was looking the way I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Yeah. You had your badge covered. We could have got everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but but and in the and in that time um, and in that time I, I would I would assume that you probably think of it every day. Oh fuck! Every you, day. When you love it, you think of it every. every day. People people ask me like uh, you know, like do, do you miss it? Every fucking day of my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every time I wake up, I miss it. I, I wish I can do it. I wish I can go running. I wish I can, you know, get punched, punch somebody. Yeah. You know. Crazy. You know, I sit here in awe because I can see the realities. I hear what you're saying, and I, feel I, and I can no, see it. I no, can feel it. No, and no, no. I just sit here in awe of you. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's been Thank a you journey, for everything man. you've done for yeah. the fight fans, yeah. what you've done for the fight business, and what you're about to do. Yeah. No, what's you. crazy is, uh, like, like I was saying, I, I did it for everybody. I did all these years. Like, it's for everybody. I, the gold medal for my mom, the world titles for the fans, for the people, for my dad. Da -da. You know what? I, I actually want to do this for me now. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I hope you don't mind me me uh, saying this. I didn't know I didn't know your mom, but I know how much you loved her. Yeah. I know how difficult it must have been with all of with that at a time when you were just starting. You're going to the Olympics and everything. But <clears throat> your dad, your dad's a pretty tough dude, huh? Yeah. Like emotionally you know, yeah, hard. You know, just hard. Uh, yeah, emotionally, like you know, it's like. Till this day, you, 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 I still wait for like, hey, I'm proud of you, son. Uh, I have a good story. Dude, I have a funny story. Uh, he, <laughs> by the time you finish the story, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be crying. Orale. So, so, you know, I mean, I, I went to the Olympics, you know, won the gold medal, ta -da, and still you get no validation, you know, like, hey, son, I'm proud of you, dude. Hey, I love you, dude. But what would he say in those times, man? He wouldn't say, uh, hey, I mean, uh, it's hard. Hey, you... Could have done better, you know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could have, you could have, uh, you know. Hey, all right, hey, pretty good, but come on, you can do better. And so, it's crazy, right? So just, just, oh, yeah. just, just last year, I said, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tell him I love him. You know, I'm gonna fucking go up to him and tell him I love him. So you know, it's like we're at a party with my tia's house. You know, whatever, everybody's drinking. You know, fucking I. I got to get in the slot. You know, I got to have about three, four beers just to get in the slot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, you, you want to be like point That's one awesome, zero, man. point one zero. <laughs> point one two is a little too much, but point one zero, you're in the slot. <laughs> so I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. So, so I go to my dad, hey, hey, papa, hey, I love you. And then I fucking go like that, like, <sighs> you know, like, like if he's going to hit me or something, you yeah. know. Like he's gonna react like in a in a weird way, and he fucking gets me and tells me I love you too, son. He starts crying. Oh, How crazy is that? I never expected that. Never expected that. That happened last year. And if you uh, wouldn't have reached out to him, no, he doesn't know how to do it. In the slot, he, he do doesn't it. know how. He just doesn't know how. You know. And as a, and as yeah, a as a young father too, like he was his life hard. Was his parents work hard on him? They were hard the on him. The only the only story I literally know about him. The only story. But he wouldn't I say anything. No, he wouldn't tell oh, you. Oh, never. No. no story. We don't know shit about, about him. him. Yeah. The only story he told us was that our grandfather tied him to a tree in Mexico, right? Because he was a herder of, of cows. Of, of you know, when he was like 12 years old, he he didn't want to do it. Like at 12 midnight, he was scared to go up the mountains or whatever. So they, his his father tied him to a tree in chains and started whipping him. That's the only story I know about him. Wow. Crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? 
Like, oh shit, yeah. Hey, how was your dad? Oh yeah, what are they? Yeah, he got whipped a lot, you know. <laughs> Gee, that, that, and, that's all I know. And, and in those times that I would see your dad, uh, I'd go over and say hello to him, but you could yeah. feel that this dude was yeah, yeah, was yeah. really very close. You, you, can, you can feel the wall, you know. You like, could feel that wall. Yeah. And he's a nice guy. Nice he's guy. A, yeah, nice guy, but just closed, you know, just You know, as you were telling totally. the story and George said, this guy this lot will be crying before you're done with your story. Because my dad never said I love you. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The night before he's he dies, he's in the hospital, and I told everybody to clear the room. I wanted to talk to my dad, and I went up to my dad, mm. and I had never told my dad I loved you. Yeah. Because I went up to him and I said, "Dad," and I grabbed his hand. I said, "I just got to tell you something." I said, "I love you." Uh. And my dad looked at me and said, "Me too." Oh my. He didn't say yeah. I love you. The word. Yeah, 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 bro. He said me crazy. too. That was just the way yeah, it was. Yeah, bro. And all I ever wanted to do just want to hear him, man. Was make make him proud of me. I want him to right, right. And 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 I loved him, and I know he loved me. I mean, it wasn't. <clears throat> it, was, it was a good relationship. Yeah. Uh, I learned the next morning how much it meant to him. You, right. They they found all the ten thousand dollars cash deed to the house, all the important papers, and it was wrapped up in an article about me, where I would when I had been in Vietnam trying to help huh. start an orphanage back okay. there. And so it wasn't until a year later when his my dad had already been dead, his, he had already passed away, his boss called up and said, hey, send your son down to pick up, uh, Mike Antonovich, supervisor, was his dad, pick up Christmas gift for your pop. Huh. I went down there and his old friends were in there. And he said, you're Carrillo's boy. I said, yeah, oh, I'm Blinky, I'm Lino, I'm Negro, and you know what uh -huh. I mean? I said, I've heard all about you. I've never had the pleasure of meeting you. And he says, oh, your dad was so proud of you. From the time you went oh, into the man. Army, yeah, then yeah. when you became a cop, olvida them, everything that you've done. But I never heard that yeah, from my yeah. dad. They can't tell us. They can't so, tell us. Do you think he would have told you if he was in the slot? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, not a point one two. Hey, not not point, point one one two. Dude, that we point one. one slot, if he'd, have, slot, if he'd have been in the slot, my and my mom wouldn't have been around. He'd have done it. <laughs> You like easy money? Who doesn't like easy money? Head to myboogie.ag, bet the NFL lock of the season. And when your team scores between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Bucks, you win. The best bet you can make is one you can't lose. And in case you didn't know, a game hasn't ended 0-0 since World War II. So this is a sure bet. <laughs> That's awesome. It really is That's that simple. Join my bookie now, bet the lock of the season, and when the first point is scored in the season opener on Thursday night, you automatically cash. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to join my bookie, all right? And let's see how I do this season. I'm not a gambler, but I like football, and I think this would be a fun way. And thank you, my bookie, for allowing people to get a little uh, bonus in their little discount. And uh, it'll be awesome, man. Let's see how we do. Head to mybookie.ag today and use your promo code OMGHI. That's oh my god high and instantly receive double your first deposit. That's double your funds to double your winnings. Again, that's promo code OMGHI. That's oh my god high to receive double your first deposit and get started with my bookie today. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. You know, watching sports is fun, but betting on a team. That's not your team, and winning money is better. It's it's the best. I started one called mylugi.com, and <laughs> we went on the media. Never got off the ground. I ordered all the banners. He thought, oh, fuck it. it. never took off it. To be world known and to, to be a boxer, to, to be an Olympian, gold medalist, yeah. a golden boy, um, even through all that, and he was at all the fights. Yeah. Yeah. He never even had the. I mean, how, how closed off is someone when yeah. you're fighting on the highest level and right. you win a championship and you're around yeah. your son and you still Damn. not even break character and yeah. just be like, yeah. "Can I talk to you?" and just yeah. hug you or start crying or you see it in him or anything. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just it's just you know the, the the way I see it, it's different times. You know, the way, the way they grew up. You know, like you, you sometimes have to like. You have to sometimes like feel bad for them, you know. Yeah. It, it's it's like there are kids now. You like it's like oh shit, like you you have to do the work. You have to confront them with you know. You have to fucking make the effort. You know. It's it's yeah. not fair, but 
you know once you do it it's like then maybe they can break down you know but it's it's not easy you know my three adult kids now there was not a day where i didn't go by yeah, yeah, and say here. i love you same here bro same i did here. not want them to go same through here what I did. same here i got six i beat you but uh, <laughs> yeah, he does. All well, i didn't have anybody all throwing, six kids. i didn't have anybody throwing parachutes yeah. at me either brother <laughs> i have there's all my six kids man tell them all the time every day i love you i love you i love you i love yeah. you for that reason you know yeah it's pretty crazy very different and you know i've seen yeah. those kids grow up yeah yeah i mean pretty yeah. amazing now they're great kids man great kids we played uh, that time yeah. i think it was maybe 2005 how old was what's his name uh, jacob the, jacob, jacob. was maybe seven <laughs> bro he's He's 23 now, 62. And I saw him at a, at, at a, yeah. I saw Crazy. him at a, who are you, are you, are you mine? I saw him at a, at a, <laughs> at the golf tournament and he goes, hey, this is uh, Jacob. And I have a picture of me and Oscar yeah, and him. Yeah. And he might have been seven years yeah. old. Yeah, to his waist. Yeah. Dude, now he's, now, now I look up, I look at him like, oh shit. It's crazy. Time flies. How are their lives, man? Are they are they good? I mean, they're it's got to be tough. Though. Yeah, they're normal, man. The, um, yeah, they're normal. They they you know it's I, I was very fortunate. Um, so I have six kids with four moms, right? And their moms were great. They they you know I got lucky. I I I got lucky. I don't know. Some like somebody's looking out for me. You know, it's a, it's that feeling of like my mother looking out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, that's a crazy story in itself. But um, um have you seen your mom? Have, has she come to you? in the night and things and you think about her you in dreams well they check this one out they dude. do come though. check the oh check this out bro okay so i used to about i would say uh, i would say i would yeah. say about a year ago um it's been a year now but about a year ago my life when she passed my life was a freaking hell dude like you know I, every time if i would drink or whatever like i would just bawl and cry and you know like like she was with me all the time and i would think about her and it it, it just pained me you know right. so check this one out so this one girl that i meet that da, you know that she threw me a little parachute and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, um, I, I can imagine the Oscar throwing pair like fucking uh, <laughs> on d-day in normandy fucking thousands a couple a couple of uh, uh, men <laughs> underwear <laughs> 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 um so so 35. this one girl yeah she, she went to like india and shit she studied like to be a shaman right to be a shaman yep and so we were like very close friends start on she goes you know I, I one day she's at my place and we're talking she was actually my interior dec uh, decorator for one of my places and she, and i uh, believe in all this by the way oh yeah you so do I yeah understand. so 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 she tells me you know what you, you look like you look like you're in pain like what do you mean you know i'm fucking out i, I was just waking up at 12 in the afternoon like yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, pain can you grab me a beer and uh if Oscar, tell, if, I, <laughs> hey, if Oscar tells you he's 10 minutes away he'll be there at 9 30 tonight <laughs> that's why today i was like he's on, he's on time i just want to clarify one thing just just for myself and the thousand of other latinos that are going to hear this what is a shaman oh yeah so so uh, so so she so she go she she goes to to india and she's there for like a year, and yeah. I guess it's it's kind of like oh, what the you're fuck you're, is you're a, a, a healer, like a teacher. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, of, you're, you're, of, of, of natural medicine, spirituality, and, you know, and yeah. medicine, yeah. and let, and almost like a vibes, you know. Let, let it be known to the to the listeners. Even Oscar said, looked at you and said, okay, so what is yeah. the job? <laughs> it's all those yeah. ladies that used to live in the back house with the werewolves <laughs> yeah. and the red string. Yeah. And, and, Harder and, to find. And, and the polvos, <laughs> like that, but the, but trained in India. Hey, yeah. my, my tía was a shaman then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So oh, the back, oh, no, no. no. Back yeah. They're, heal they're like, healers. And they, they, in they the Latin community, like, sense, yeah. yeah, like all our tías are shamans. Yeah. yeah. So 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 um, she goes, you know what? I, I, I have something for you that I can, I can help you out. Can I help you out? And, you know, she was fucking hot. So I go, yeah, you can help me out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she she has to prepare, right? So she goes, okay, we're gonna do it next week. Da -da -da. So uh, she goes, where do you want to do it? Like, where do you want to do the ceremony? Da -da -da. I go, well, here, you know, my home. I feel comfortable. You know, I'm here alone. Da -da -da. So anyway, she, one night she gets there. She sets up candles in the room, and uh, she tells me, well, you gotta wear a robe, you know, to to be free, you know, the air and all that shit, and you know, and just. You know, and so <laughs> you can't get to be free, man. <laughs> he's trying, he's trying. So, so she gives me, she gives me, 
she gives me mushrooms. Okay, she gives me mushrooms. I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck? Like dried up fucking yeah, gray yep. chorro mushrooms, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Like, you know, oh, this ones, is this is microdosing. All right, this is. And I'm like, because I, I don't know this shit. She's yeah. this is microdosing. Just take them. So I fucking take them, obviously. <laughs> and we're talking. She asked me about. She asked me about my childhood. She asked me about my mom. She asked me about like just my pain of my past, right? I tell her everything, you know. And so 30 minutes later, we go into the room. There's candles everywhere. You know, it's, it's, it's a red room. It kind of looks like a strip club. But, you know, little candles and everything, you know. And uh, you don't have a lot of that comes looking at the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fucking robe is still closed. So, so, we, so we sit down. We're like an Indian, Indian sitting down, like, you know, Indian style, whatever. And she tells me, close your eyes. And instantly, fucking instantly, I shot up to the fucking galaxy, mm -hmm. and now I'm I, and I don't know what I am. I'm I'm like I'm like air. I'm I'm water. I'm I'm this matter. I don't know what the fuck I am, but I'm not. It's not me. Right. Yeah. And I'm looking at the galaxy, bro. And there's stars, and there's the moon, and the every. It's it was crazy. And she tells me, okay. And she's holding my hand. She tells me, think about, take take yourself to your mom. And all of a sudden, I shoot down to the ocean. Right. I shoot down to the ocean. It was like this thing just shotting down to the ocean and I'm going, going down thousands of feet and all of a sudden I stop and it's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful, right? And in the back, way back over there, like maybe a hundred feet away, there's like this algae, right? And I see something behind it. It's like a, it's like a thing. Like I, it, it's not, it's, it's not, it's, I don't feel it's like a fish or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I feel, I feel that thing just like kind of bows down, right? And right there in that moment, I felt that that was my mother forgiving me. <clears throat> she was forgiving me, bro. And I felt it, and I felt it, man. And then all of a sudden I shot up. And so right there and then, right there and then, I felt free from the pain um, of my mother. Like I was free. Wow. I, I felt it right there and then, man. And what's crazy, I shot back up to the galaxy and I'm, seeing stars and you know all this beautiful it's just beautiful and she tells me okay let's go to little oscar when you were seven years old and i have had a lot of shit happen to me at, you know when i was a kid you know from being uh molested from being you know um fucking uh, uh raped at 13 years old from an older woman you know i've had a lot of shit yeah. happen to me yeah. so I right away start panicking. I have my eyes closed, keep in mind, I have my eyes closed and I tell her, I can't do this, I can't do this. And she's holding me and she's holding me. I can't do this, it's too fucking painful. She tells me, picture little Oscar 100 feet away from you and there's a bridge between you guys, okay? Picture him coming closer to you and I'm saying, I can't do this, I fucking can't do this, I'm feeling uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, little Oscar's right here and I fucking wake up. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with it, man. So I still have I still have my demons from my childhood that I have to deal with, um, but I'm free from my mother's pain, right. which is great. Since that time, I've never. Now I just love. Now I just I don't cry. I don't fuck. I, I just feel love. I f like like she forgave me. I always thought that I had to forgive her. You know, I was the bad kid. I was the one. You know, why did I get hit every day? You know. Right. Right. Why did I fucking get spanked and this and that every fucking day? It wasn't my fault. It was her fault. It was her fault that she felt pain when she was a kid. Right. Her mom beat the shit out of her. You know what I'm saying? So I was free, bro. And um, now I have to look for that shaman again. I haven't. I don't know where she's at. To free myself from little Oscar. It's crazy. You know, there might be a chance that that lady wasn't just it really was, yeah, kind of not around. I don't around. know where she's at. I don't know where she's at. You know, it's you been know, a year. There, there's no doubt. There, there's no doubt in my mind. Again. Oh, is that our time? Or? I'm, I'm witnessing. Whose phone is that, Gilbs? Uh, yeah. My phone. You got the, <laughs> turn it. the jingle jingle. Hey, the fucking the, shaman, the dude. What are they? <laughs> hey, they remember the number. They so know. Right here. But you know, <laughs> you know, those spiritually, man, those things live like you. Oh, you they got to make some more, but we can't. I'm going to say that those things Thanks. live in this world, man. Yeah. And, you know. You look at the thousands of years of people and you look at what came before us and 
and the bodies are just bodies, but yeah. the spirit yeah. is the light. You, be, you soul. believe in that, right? I, I, yeah. I've had yeah. things happen to me yeah. that are just yeah. that again. Are just there's amazing. no doubt in my mind. It's crazy listening to it, but more so than listening, watching you go through it. That was yeah. very, very true. Yeah. Uh, you believed in it. You know, you know and who. It really um, happened. But he didn't believe in it before. No, 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 no. Fuck no. Me. So that's why you know. No. I think Oscar, man, and I, you know, I can tell. Yeah. Oscar's had a lot of a lot of pain in his oh, in, in his life, and I and I know that. That's why I've asked those questions, and yeah. and he doesn't deserve it. Yeah. And you don't. And nobody deserves to to live with it. No, it's fucking. So sucks, he took. Man. You know, the one from your mother is great. Yeah. The, the mother yeah. and little Oscar at the same time was yeah. too much. It, it, oh, it, it was. Yeah, it, it was overwhelming, man. It but was, it, it's yeah. too much for a person in but at one time. I wonder, well, as big as I am, if I'd have to eat more mushrooms to get me to get off the ground like <laughs> yeah. that. I'm telling you, you'd find you'd find your father again, oh, bro. And he'd, he'd talk to you. It's crazy. Oh yeah. It's crazy. I I'm a firm believer in the in the microdosing now. Like yeah. I'm a firm believer. But souls and love and yeah. people leave, but they don't really leave. They leave in their body, but it's they crazy, don't leave man. in their spirit. It's crazy. I'm a firm believer now. It's crazy. Had you done anything like that before? Any? No, 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 nothing, man. Nothing. Did you ever do the handwriting at Alberta Street? <laughs> With <laughs> no, the lady no. fix you right. <laughs> She would write. I this is a sample of my handwriting. Then she would look at you, yeah. and oh, she would, uh, and she would tell your she would just handwriting say, yeah. from. Uh, did you, you ever you do that? Problems. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You, you have know, problems. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. I couldn't get past the taquitos on Alvarez Street. That's right. The little people, the little waiter, <laughs> the little guacamole taquitos, and the, little, the waiter there uh, with the long fingernail, the pinky. Finger. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Uh, 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 <laughs> You know, what it's it? it's funny because it's funny. no mine are off now. because no I one's. It's not me. Who? What is that? No, the iPad Oscar iPad? goes in that it's time up. Is uh is uh. <laughs> it's fine. No, nobody uh is the same. And social media, what I think about social media is it makes everybody look like they're having a great life. They're not. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck. Right. Yeah. And it's all people like... and kids now. Yeah. You know, I sound like I'm I'm old. But they don't work as hard oh, no, as no. the generations no. that had to come before them because nothing no. was given to them. Right. You know, in paying Mayan's rent or paying Mayan's car insurance, my grandmother would have never paid my car insurance. My grandfather would have <laughs> never fucking helped me pay rent. Hell He'd no. have done nothing for me. And yeah. I would have had, have expected him to do anything for me. And now we almost expect, yeah. the kids almost expect you to kind of float sure. them and to be there for them, and if you're not, somehow yeah. they're mad at you. I think mine's mad right. at me because yeah, yeah. when Ana Navarro was in town, I didn't call her and tell her that, yeah. you know, but I told her what days, she didn't call me to check yeah. in, and I went and did what I had to do, and she was here, and we went to dinner, and she's upset because I didn't call her to remind yeah. her, but at some point, you have to remind yeah. yourself. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I ask myself a lot, like, uh, like, okay, whose fault is that? Like, because I, I give my kids everything they fucking mm -hmm. want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my family didn't have the means, or you know, it just it was just different, you know. But you're right. It's like my kids have all. They have cars. They have insurance. They have this. Hey, Dad, can I have some uh, money for some golf? You know, yeah. fucking tea times and this. So yeah, cheap. sure. You know, I, I, I. I who the fuck yeah. is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and and so it's like I sometimes think to myself, fuck. Well, if I don't do it, if I don't give it to them. Then maybe they won't be so fucking spoiled, you know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's 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 for me for me it's like, is it my fault or is it or how am I? Is anybody them up? It, even if is anybody at blame? Yeah. But do do they do they meet you halfway? I don't think so. No, they just no, ask. They're, they're they just do, used to it. They do nothing. They don't yeah, do anything for they're it. Used to it. I have my boy that's uh, 15. He wants to be a fighter, but he doesn't want to train. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Like, hey, I can watch it on YouTube and I'll learn. <laughs> Are you kidding no. me? You gotta fucking get hit. Yeah. You gotta get knocked out to feel it. You know? No, 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 no. I, I, I can do it. I can do it harder than this guy. <laughs> so, so when you started going to the gym, what? Because you know, some then Anna asked me like, why did you keep going back to do stand up when you weren't any good at it? And I would cry. And the one time I cried in the car, and I was like, fuck it, I don't need wow. this shit. And the next morning I woke up and I went at it again. Yeah. yeah what yeah. made you go back to the gym in those times when? Well, in in the beginning, I was forced into it. I mean, I was six years old, so I was just You forced. didn't want to? No, fuck, no. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> what, 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 what kid wants yeah. to go and get a hit, you know? And, and, fuck it, hey, man. But you know what's funny? After, when I was nine years old, I was fighting a, a, an amateur, like, fight, right? Where you get a little trophy, you know? And back then, they only had first and second. Not fucking seventh place and shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> fucking seven for the trophy. Dissipation. The trophy is about to lay halfway up. Like <laughs> Ten. You know. Just like a yeah. Bag. You know what I'm saying? Um, so one day I, I I fought and you know the uncles are there and because all my uncles were fighters and my father wow. and you know so we're we're a family of fighters. So I won and I get off the ring and my my one of my uncles gives me like fifty cents, like fifty cents. I'm like oh shit, you know. Okay, now and later, I'm already thinking how I'm spending yeah. it. You know, now, now and later, you can, you know, all that. It's your first purse. Now and later, we're yeah. fucking great. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. your fucking white well for like three, yeah, yeah. three years. <laughs> little fucking pig's feet, right little pig's feet. Yeah. Oh, fucking little pig's yeah. feet. Yeah. So right there and then, I thought to myself, oh, I can, I can, I can do something with this. You know, if if I'm if I'm getting fifty cents now, oh, maybe you know, and that's how I started loving it. What was the journey to the Olympics? Where did you have to? How did you? How did you get picked? Or how did you? Yeah. Qualify, or where did they see you to say, "Hey, I think you can become, you know, yeah. an Olympian." They, they actually, there, there's actually, they, there, there's actually a, 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 a Olympic committee. I think when you're like 13, they start scouting you. Okay. Yeah, they're they're like they're like these they're like these fucking like people you don't see, you know. You're just training, third eye. You start winning tournaments, um, the, the the Golden Gloves, and oh, yeah. so then they start hearing about you, and then the Olympic Committee starts sending people like to the gyms and scouting and this and that. So they have an eye on you. So at like 13, I started getting like, you know, I guess mm -hmm. seen and and, yeah. and you know and 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 categorized as like that's the one, that's the one yeah. that's gonna fucking make it. So yeah, yeah. just winning tournaments locally. Once you start winning locally, then you go regionally and then national. Once you win national, it's like now you're on their radar, you know. Now they start like, okay, that's the guy, dude. That's the guy. Then they 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 assign like fucking minions, you know, like yeah. okay, let's make sure he doesn't get in trouble. Make sure he doesn't, you know, make sure he fucking gets A's in school. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh yeah. 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 And who did you who did you fight? What was your way up? Who did you fight on the way up to the gold medal? Did to any the, of those to the gold medal? Um, Oh, Did any of those guys ever ever become fighters beyond the Olympics? You know what? Remember Shane Mosley? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Sugar Shane, Sugar Shane Mosley. Yeah, he didn't go to the Olympics, but he was like right there. He was right there. I think he got beat by Vernon Forrest. Yeah, Forrest. Yeah, Paul Gonzalez, amazing. He, he was a local Paul Gonzalez. Boy that, yeah, East LA, 1984. Yeah. yeah, he went to the Olympics. Yeah. Well, he was he was like one of my heroes. I mean, he, you know, growing up, we grew up in the same neighborhood, same gym. But I I had to crazy fight. that two dudes came from the same neighborhood, yeah. same gym, and yeah. went to the Olympics. Yeah. We he fought. Uh, let's see. I fought. I fought. Check this one out. So I, throughout my amateur career, I hadn't lost in like ten years, oh beating God. everybody's Damn. ass. Can okay? you imagine, man? And we're talking about. Lost in 10 yeah, years. we're talking about, dude. I had two hundred and forty-five fights. Whoa. Yeah. So so I'm beating everybody. So it's 1991, and we go to Australia to fight for the world titles. And it's like kind of like a pre-Olympic, you know, right. just to see where you're at in the world, you know? Wow. So you have to fight five times to win the gold, right? Five different countries. So I'm, I'm, I'm the favorite, you know? I go in there like fucking, okay, I'm gonna win, you know, I feel confident. My first fight, I go up against Germany and he beats my ass. Fucking beats my ass. I locked myself, I locked myself inside the room for like at least like six days. I didn't come out. I was I was fucking devastated. You hadn't lost him forever. For Ten years. And and the guy yeah, beat you. And, and I was only sixteen years. Would old. Would you say that he beat you? Yeah, he, he kicked he my kicked ass. Your ass. He fucking kicked my ass. Yeah. So then, so then, right after that, my mom passed away. Okay, she passed away. She had breast cancer, third eye, stage four. You know, it's crazy. I she passed away. I actually retired for like three, four months. Like I said, you know what? That's it. I can't. I can't. My mom's not here. Third eye. You devastating. Know. Him. Yeah. And then all of us, like like you said, you know, you feel them. You, you one day it's like I woke up. I was living in a in a garage in East LA with my brother, sleeping in, in in bunk beds. And one day, like at four in the morning, I woke up and I said, you know what? I have to go back and train. Yeah. You know, it happened just like that. Yeah. So I requalified for the Olympics. Made the Olympic team, 1992, and I had to face. So I faced Africa. The first fight, tough fight. Second one was Korea. Boom, beat them. Brazil, knocked them out. Um, Cuba, da da da, knocked them out. And then I'm thinking to myself, where in the fuck is Germany? Where in the fuck? Is so I'm fighting in the gold medal round. Sure. And in the fucking corner, while going up the ring, there's fucking Germany. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I was fucking scared as fuck because I promised my mom I would, I would win the gold medal. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm scared as hell. And so it just, I mean, it's like, you know how things just happen for a reason, you know? It's just, it happens, you know? Like, call it what karma, I mean, call yeah. it whatever. Yeah, first round, dropped them, won the fight easy, actually. I won that. I mean, I, I can't even remember, like. With it the same guy? With the same guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, Germany. See, today. Marco Rudolph. Yeah. Right now, world renowned, world known Oscar de la Hoya, the guy from Germany, Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> yeah. Right there by the Burbank, he where the Burbank had Studios. Had a, yeah. He had a little, little oh, mustache. Dude, right was, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, imagine at that age that that he, the water, brewing. coffee, oh, it's brewing. Yeah, that, yeah we get to. We're, right, we're almost done there. I don't want to keep you longer than that. That's that all good, bro. But but, I mean, I to be in that moment that yeah. you're wow. like, man, this is that cabron, dude. it's crazy. Huh? That cabron. Life, it's, life is crazy. I remember. You're I was, a young kid. Dude, I was, now, now I'm 17. 17. Man. I'm on top of the podium. I still get fucking choked up. I'm on top of the podium and listening to the national I'm anthem. I'm looking at you, man, and I'm trying to, yeah. I remember that. And I see you right across from me, man. And I'm, like, and I'm like this. And I'm like this with, with my gold medal, with the flowers they give you. And I'm trying to be happy, but I'm fucking devastated and sad as hell. But I couldn't cry. I was just frozen, you know? I was froze because, you know, my mother passing away. I think away. you probably felt pretty alone oh, bro, up there because the minute was, you win, that's over. Yeah. Now you're back to the reality of, you know, you're up there and then, I mean, it, yeah, I think you would have given anything for your mom to, oh, oh come on. So I, so I go down out of the ring, right? And then there's, there's, there's NBC who's televising the whole thing. And the world's watching. I remember, yeah. And... I think it's Fred Rogan. He's still, I think he's here in, uh, still on NBC. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah. And he tells me, uh, so Golden Boy, how does it feel f to do it for your mother? And right there, I just fucking broke down. Oh, no, oh, dude, I couldn't even talk. Couldn't even talk. Wow. Fucking crying for days. Yeah. It's a great story. You remember that? Yeah, yeah I it sure do. It was a big story. I saw, I remember Oscar sure seeing first, your first fight on CBS. Yeah, yeah. Your first fight as a drone. I remember watching Oscar, and you were telling the story, you know, you're six years old, you didn't want to fight, you mm. know, and then who wants to do that? I remember Mondo Ramos when he was in the ring. He, he was oh, going yeah. through the same thing. He yeah. didn't want to fight. He was afraid. He was, his dad right. was pushing him yeah. uh, to get in yeah. the ring. Yeah, it's crazy. There's a lot of sad stories, man. You know, Bobby Chacon, you know, came from San Fernando. Oh, bro, yeah. And I don't know if there's a one sadder. Of the, one of the better, we talked about best that. fighters. And yeah. Did, yeah. Eva, did, did Eva do those documentaries all right, you think? Um, so Eva directed, Eva Longoria directed some documentaries. Yeah. And she's like, uh, you know, she's in there, and, and she, you know, she actually, she actually did. She caught, she caught the moments, and she actually, um, which is coming out soon. Um, she did the, uh, we had her do uh, Chavez versus De La Hoya. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And you know, Chavez versus De La Hoya was a yeah. big, big fight. Yeah. Because well, the, the way it divided cultures, bro. it divided cultures, yeah. and and yeah. think about when Oscar was in his prime. The criticism was that he wasn't from Mexico, wasn't Mexican so he enough. wasn't Mexican enough. Exactly. But he was born in the United States. Yeah. So you yeah. can't plan where you're born. Right. And he took a lot of shit from people oh, because they didn't think he was Mexican Crazy. enough. Yeah. So then here he had to fight Julio Cesar Chavez, which is, he was more Mexican. The king, the king the of Mexico. The king of Mexico. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he beat the shit out of him. Once I beat him, bro, it's like, once... See, here, here I am in the Olympics, right? I, I come back and my life has changed forever. Everybody fucking loves me because, you know, my mom's story sure. and they were mm -hmm. playing it big. Yeah. Cancer, third eye, you know, this kid wins. Right. So I, I had crossed over, you know. Now the world is like enamored, you know. But when I faced Chavez, when we signed the contract, it's like, fuck. Now, now all of Mexico is against me. Even uncles were like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude?" Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. And uh, huge fight. So when I beat, I remember when I beat him, I was like, "Oh shit!" Now I'm the fucking king, you know. Yeah. And no, fuck no. I was like the the enemy, the public enemy number one, man. I was the villain now. I remember I did a. You remember the? Uh, there's a September 16 parade in East LA. Yeah. The East LA yes. parade, right? It's your hometown. I was, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was the the grand, the grand marshal, marshal, and I'm like happy that, I, dude, I, you know how many A's I got thrown at me? No shit. Fucking A's. Yeah. Wow, man. And I had my pops there too, and I remember him fighting with the with the cholas and the cholos. Hey, what the fuck? I'm Mexican. He's Mexican too. 
because people didn't accept me as wow. like as as Mexican, you know. You know what I'm saying? It, it was crazy. It was crazy. So what yeah. about when he's coming all, up? All I can nobody say is pinche raza. They're pinche never ra happy. Yeah, you know, either. they're never happy. The 12 Marines. I got blamed for the what happened to the 12 Marines in Afghanistan. God bless them. Somebody sent me a message saying, you know, you're you're this and that. Hey, thanks. But yeah. what the fuck? That's crazy, man. It's it's it's, it's 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 wild out there. Man. Yeah, it is. It but is. you know, nothing when well, you're on your way media, up. Obviously, now on right your way now. up, nothing, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you become a pro. Yeah. Now you now in in success, no. you divided the the cultures yeah. now. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a. Didn't you guys fight division. twice? Yeah, we did. And the second time, two years. Yeah, the second time, worse. yeah, it was it was. Uh, yeah. It was a fun fight. It was a fun fight because I remember, the first fight, everybody was like. Well, he he started saying, "No, I was you didn't beat me. I, I was already cut because yeah. the referee stopped it because a bad cut. I remember I hit him with a solid jab, and he was just cut. And it was four rounds, and so everybody started believing. Oh yeah, Chavez wasn't ready. Da, da, this and that. Said, so yeah. I said, okay. Two years later, okay, let's fight again then. So I wanted to fight him because I I boxed the first fight. I was I mean fuck, right. nobody could stop me that that fight that night right there. Nobody can touch me. I was fucking a machine." The second fight, I said, you know what? I'm going to stand in front of you and fight you with balls, dude. Like, right here. Let's go. And sure, he almost knocked me out. But that f the ninth round, he didn't come out because I hit him with an uppercut. Boom. And I busted his teeth through his through his, through his oh. lip right here. So his teeth were, like, fucking oh. sticking out. Oh. And wow. so he went back to his corner, and, and they stopped the fight, you know? Wow. And so right there, I think I got a little more respect. But, right. you know, but even then, it's like. You beat our hero, you know. And what about now? If you saw him now, yeah, it's not. Nah, we're cool. We're cool. Every, everything's cool. Yeah, we're cool. What it's, about his son? You know, did his son still fighting? His son, uh, yeah, he just got beat by Anderson Silva. Just got it, beat it, by. It, okay. yeah. I mean, that guy was yeah. top notch for yeah. a second. Yeah, he, he, he was. He was good. You know what it but was? But Anderson Silva is like a like yeah discipline. Yeah, discipline. So listen, so as much problems as Oscar De La Hoya even talks about what going on in his head. <laughs> When Julio Cesar Chavez, <laughs> after he fought, he would go back to Mexico and live in a cocaine tree oh, <laughs> for like three months. I yeah. mean, nobody would, would, partied nobody, harder yeah. than him when he would yeah. go back. He'd hang out with the Sinaloa cartel. Oh, bro. Listen, my mom Crazy. didn't want me to hang out with a couple of dudes because one wore a bandana one day. I don't want you hanging out with esos cabrones, malos cabrones. This dude would hang out with the Sinaloa cartel, yeah. and you wouldn't see him. He wouldn't go home. Yeah. And, I mean, he... He was out he, there. He went man. hard. He went he hard. He went hard. He went hard. I remember um, late years later. I think they I have cocaine trees where he <laughs> in the village. <laughs> that's where, that's whatever time he went. Oh, yeah. 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 Years Just later. Yeah. Bajate, cabrón. <laughs> <laughs> Nunca, güey. Nunca me bajo, cabrón. No soy mexicano. Years later. Years later, right? He's retired. Um, I think I'm retired, too. And. He invites me to Culiacán, mm -hmm. okay? That's where it goes down. That's yeah. where the trees so are. So he invites me to Culiacán because he's having an opening, like, ceremony, like a cutting ribbon ceremony to one of his rehab centers. Did you know that he, ha he, has, he awesome. now has rehab centers, oh, right? Wow, he's, no, he's squeaky clean now, Yeah, which is awesome, which is amazing. That, it really is good. That's good So, so, so I, we land, boom, you know, Don King is there, like, tons of people, you know? And Julio gets me, you know, and by the way, I land and I'm thinking, fuck, because this is the first time I'm in Culiacan. And I'm thinking, fuck, I'm going to get fucking killed here, you know, because right. I beat Chavez. No, everybody was a sweetheart. Everybody was respectful. Everybody was beautiful. So then Chavez pulls me over and uh, pulls me to the side and tells me, hey, hey this is where I trained. This is wow. where I trained all my life. This is my home. I, com I wanted to convert it into a rehab place Amazing. because I have so many fucking demons in here. It reminds me of that shit. And he actually even told me I would sleep here for with nobody seeing me for three months yeah. at a time just fucking doing blow Serious. left and right. Dude. Like, it, yeah, yeah. Oh, this guy was fucking, yeah. He was, wow. but, but you, you see his life now. And it's 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 pretty pretty badass. You know what? It's Thank God badass. too, because yeah, I yeah. mean it's beautiful. Because you know, a guy like that, or or people from Mexico, uh -huh. or Mexicans, or anybody with demons, like you think you're, um, that you can't you can't be good. Like you can't go right. clean. You can't yeah. change oh, your you're life. Fucked. Yeah. If he if Forever. he did, anybody can. Because oh, he, he went. That he guy, went hard. That's a tough place. Dude. I was down there, uh, invited back there with some other guys to go watch a graduation of some cops from over there that had. Done some training out here with us. Yeah, 
I went back there, and we were allowed. Uh, they allowed us to go out and do whatever we wanted. But at night, we had to stay inside the hotel. Don't go out on the streets at yeah. night because the cartel runs the streets. At oh, night. yes. Freaking dangerous. Man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, if, 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 if he can, anybody can, that's for sure. No, if he can, anybody fucking can. Hey, I have a fucking chance, you know. Now, now, you know, now you want to talk about, like, East L.A. versus, like, what a Chicano is or what lack of respect is and then what could potentially happen to somebody. Uh, briefly, let's talk about when you fought Fernando Vargas. Ah, uh, yeah. So Fernando yeah. Vargas was right. coming up. Yeah. A little bit of exciting. You already, yeah. you're Oscar De La Hoya. I'm established. Yeah, he's calling yeah. you out, calling you a punk, right. calling you. He's he's the bad boy, you know. He's, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's the bad boy, but he's badass. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's a good fighter. Fucking yeah, really good. Um, strong as fuck, you know. And and he was from, uh, or Oxnard. he is from Oxnard. Yeah. You know, tough neighborhood, third this and that. And so all of a sudden, we we're gonna fight. Orale, you know, I'm, and he's. In his prime, you know, he I think he had just fought uh, Trinidad or something like that. Um, but we all trained in Big Bear, right here in Southern California. Sure, I went up the there. Mountains, yeah. Right, yeah, in, I was up uh, there. in Big Bear. And it's funny because we would always cross each other, um, like his posse and my posse. We would always cross each other during, like, morning runs, you know. Okay. And it was kind of like fucking, uh, what's that? What's that movie where they're like fucking with knives and shit? Like, you know. It's like West Side West Story. West Side Story. Story and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. We got the jets we and the sharks knives, running dude. by we each other. Little wow, puddles, you didn't pass that. each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little sticks, you know, like, what are they, yeah, yeah. fucker? And the fucking snowballs, you know, what are they, fucker? <laughs> and, um, and so, and then it was just heated, you know? The whole buildup of the fight was just fucking. But what was he saying about you? Oh, that I'm I know you Mexican remember. enough. Yeah, you know, you're not Mexican yeah, enough. I'm not Mexican enough. You're fucking sell out this and that, with all that shit, you know. And uh, so the, it's fight week, right? And I'm hearing rumors that this guy's fucking, he trained like a motherfucker, you know. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I trained too, you know. No big deal. So it's the weigh-in. You were there. I was it's, there. It's the weigh-in, right? And we couldn't get close to each other because shit was going to go down. Mm -hmm. So they, I remember at, at the arena, they built a huge, long stage I had to be over here and he had to be, be over here because or else if we met, we're going to throw down right there, you know, and there's no fight. So I remember being on stage and there's like thousands of people watching the, the weigh-in. And so he, he, he gets up on stage, takes off his shirt, bro, and he fucking looks like a bodybuilder. He starts flexing. Oh, and he's, he's fucking ripped. And I look over to my brother. Hey, fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. This guy's fucking no kidding. Oh shit. And I had to think of something how to deflate his fucking his bubble, his 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 balloon, you know? I looked at him way across the fucking the the the, the stage and I went like that. Like telling him I'm going to fucking hit, hit you right here and you're going to fucking be cuz you can't build the chin. You know, you can't build up the chin cuz I had a I had a feeling he was on something. You know, because he looked, he looked abnormal, like a fucking wrestler, you know? Yeah. Toughest fight I've ever been in. He almost had me out in the first round for, through the ropes, strong as hell. We were going at it, pa, 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 pa. All of a sudden, 11th round, I knocked him out. Knocked him out, I fucking hit him to stop the fight. A week later, uh, the anti-doping, whatever, yeah. they popped him for steroids. And it wasn't for it wasn't fucking just steroids. It was a fucking good shit. Yeah, he you was, know. Yeah, the anabolic, uh, you know, fucking puts you like a burro, you know. <laughs> and and it's funny because a week after that, and then and, and the and the victory sweeter than ever because fuck, now he's on steroids. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, he still kicks his ass. <laughs> a week after that, because the beef was so intense, really intense. Um, I called up one of his representatives and I said, "Hey, let's um, let, let's let's patch this up, man. You know, it's like we can do shit together, and you know, and fucking, you know, and and grow the raza, or you know." Yeah, yeah, sure. And so we meet up in Pasadena. I get there first to the restaurant, you know, and I'm sitting down, and it's like we close down the restaurant, you know. It's like fucking, it's like a fucking mobster it's like the Godfather. Meeting and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He gets there like fucking half hour late and shit, and I'm like, okay, hey, cool. So I, he, I see him walk in, he's with glasses, and I, I go to extend my hand to him, and he goes, nah, fuck you, fuck you, you didn't beat me. I want the fucking rematch, I want the rematch. 
And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. You know? oh, this guy, wow. Yeah, I'm like, fuck, you know? I, and I just got up and left, you know? Yeah. Just got up and left. Couldn't, you couldn't really talk sense into him or, you know, because it's the heat of the moment, you sure. know? The good thing now is that he's a totally changed family man, fucking, his, he's training his kids. Oh, well. Nice guy. I actually cha- help out his, his, his charity organization every year. You know, we're good friends. Which is the dude that you tortured for talking shit? <laughs> Mayorga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ricardo good, Mayorga. That was, Mayorga. Mayorga that was yeah. a good one. That was a good one. That was a fucking good one. This guy's talking shit about my said, wife at the he time. Said, I, yeah. I made him. I made the fight last longer so I could kick his yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him down in the first round. When I knocked him down, boom. And he's looking at me like, I go, fuck you. I'm going to fucking let you go about f- a few more rounds just to make you suffer. <laughs> I remember yeah. Floyd Mayweather Sr.'s, Floyd Mayweather Sr., yeah, was training me for that fight. The first round ended, and I'm going back to, my, to the corner, and Floyd gets me, fucking throws me in the corner. What the fuck are you doing? You should have knocked him out in the first round. And I'm thinking, ah, I want to fucking kick him <laughs> <the> fucking ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the cut man that passed away, uh, legend, huh? Oh, Chuck Bodak. Chuck Bodak. The guy that used to wear stickers on his Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Chuck Bodak. So he would, he would wear like a collage of like, yeah, stickers around his, like a crown around yeah. his head. You know, he was legendary. But he can stop. He can stop fucking. He can stop a woman from getting her period. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He can make you not bleed. <laughs> fucking amazing, man. So he, he was good. He was good. I met he Angelo good. Dundee at the at the at the weigh-in of Pacquiao. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, good dude, man. Yeah, really good dude. Just trained Muhammad Ali. I mean, I, remember who, I legends, forgot who man. Angelo was trained after Muhammad. He was training Sugar Ray some, Leonard. Maybe Sugar Ray. Maybe Sugar Ray. Yeah. He, he told somebody, I remember he was in the corner and says, if you don't start fucking moving your head, uh, you're going to break his hand. <laughs> you're going to get shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Those are good, good times, time. though. Oh, fucking beautiful times. Time, beautiful times. It's different now, you know? It's different now. It's different now. I, I, don't think, I don't think we get the same fights as we do, like, back then, you know? There's not too much action these days. Yeah. A, because fighters, not that they're good or they're, they're not good. You know, it, no, it's just they're, they're a little more cautious. Mm-hmm. It's more about the business now, you know. You know what I'm saying? Is yeah. Triple G still fighting? Uh, I, he hasn't fought since Canelo, I think. I don't know. It's I crazy. I, hadn't, I haven't heard from him for, yeah. for a while, yeah. Good, great fighter. Great fighter. You know? Fuck yeah. Um, you know, then the referees too, they stop the fights too early. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you, they see a fighter like wobble a little and oh, um, let me stop it. Yeah. Let him recoup at least, you know? Give him a chance, you know? So after so September 11th, um, are you going to fight anymore after that? It depends, man. Depends how I feel. If I, if, I, if I feel great, if I feel that I'm on my toes and I get a, a victory or, you know, it just all depends. If I do that, if that happens, yeah, I'm going to fight again. Fucking A. You doing, are you following the same kind of treatment or, or regimen of training, like jumping rope and running? Oh, different. It's different. I'm actually training smarter now. Yeah. Actually, Angelo Dundee, when, I, when he was training me way back in the day, I will never forget he had a conversation with uh, Sugar A. Robinson. And um, Angelo asked him, Sugar, like, how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you keep training at 40-something years old and you're stu- you still look incredible, you know? He goes, uh, I just cut everything in half. Cut everything in half, you know? You train smarter. That's all it is, man. Recovery's when, big. When you go in yeah. there, what do you expect to get from this dude? He's not a boxer. Uh, no, he actually is. Oh, he is a yeah. boxer. He almost made the Olympic. That's, and that's why he chose oh. him, because he, he's a UFC heavyweight champion. He's a big guy. And, 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 but that's the reason why I chose him, because I want to be challenged, you know? Yeah, his, his first thing is not boxing, but he actually made the Olympic team for Brazil almost for boxing. Okay. So he has oh, really? skill. Yeah. And this is Vitor Belfort, right? We're talking Vitor about Belfort, for, for the listening. Vitor audience, Belfort. Yeah. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm still here in my fucking old way of thinking, man. I want to fight the fucking best. I want, I want to be challenged. But I'm expecting a war, man. Let's go. I'm actually, I've been motivated and inspired by Hagler Hearns. Right. Those three fucking rounds, man, of hell. Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting that. I want that. You know, just was Vegas to, different when they fought outside? I f- I fought. I actually was the Remember last. Yeah, I, I actually was the last one to fight 
outdoor Caesar's Palace when I fought Chavez. That was the last fight ever. Remember oh, yeah. those when they used to fight outside? Yeah. So when they weren't fighting, the ring stayed up there. And <laughs> if you passed on the freeway, you could look over to the right and you'd see it. Yeah. And it looked like it wasn't a, the ring's not that big right. and the and the stands were stands like you'd, you'd oh, expect bleachers, at, a, yeah. I, at a high school. Yeah, oh, really? yeah. And it didn't look like much. And then you would look at it and you would oh, think, bro. Some of the greatest fighters in the world have fought yeah. in this area right there, yeah. and it doesn't look like much when it's empty, and then yeah. when it's full, oh, it's, it's oh, just it's, it's, it's a legendary place. It's literally That's like the way the it, Olympic Auditorium used to yeah, be. Yeah, the Olympic Auditorium didn't look like much for the you know, yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah. they're legendary. Did you ever go there? Now. Yeah, I, I remember. I was uh, my dad used to take me when I was six years old. <laughs> it's he, the place. He <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. place is the greatest. Like miados everywhere. They would throw, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. They would, if oh. they didn't like the decision, they would, they oh, would yeah. be in the cup, oh, yeah. and they had a way to throw the yeah. cup so that it stayed in the air <laughs> in the proper way, and then when it landed, it just exploded. Just walked in and exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I went they to go like see. That, and it uh, would stay up. It's like a good The night uh, yeah. Ruben Navarro <laughs> fought uh, Lomali, yeah. and all the Mexican nationals were Lomali, Lomali, yeah. and all the guys from the body were Ruben, Ruben, and, and here come the meows, the meows up yeah. here, and the fights. It was crazy. It was. I remember. I remember. My dad would. Um. He would. He would leave me. He would. We would get in. He would go and sit down, maybe like in the half section. You yeah, know. Yeah. You know, for ten bucks, five bucks, yeah. whatever. And he would leave me. Like he would see any little kids like by themselves, like lost and shit, and he would just leave me there. Like, oh, go play. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, go hang out. Yeah, that's awesome. And we would just go play, you know, just, you know. And then for some strange reason, after the fights, we would just connect again, you know. It, it, it's, it was quite a place, man. Right. Like, you give me a ticket and they tear it in yeah, half. Yeah, they give yeah. you the whole little, thing. Little, 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 little ticket. Just a little, little ticket, tickets. yeah. yeah. And, you yeah, know, yeah. when I drive by there, I want to go in there and, and go see what's in there, but uh, I, I don't I don't think it looks anything I, I like think, it. I think it turned into a, a, uh, a Chinese church. Yeah. 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 Chinese church. But a lot of lot of great memories there, man. I actually won my first world title there at the wow. Olympic Auditorium. My grandfather fought there, and my father fought there. Wow! Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I got I had the opportunity to ring it out there for for cop fights at the Olympic. Oh Auditorium. yeah, oh, yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember uh, last time. Uh, what LAPD versus uh, sheriff's department? Sheriff, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. You guys throw down. Dude. Well, man, listen, man. Thanks for coming. I love you, man. You know I love you. You know I love you, brother. This is my this is my always, dude right here. Always. And, hey, uh, remember that one time you fucking gave me a brownie? But <laughs> when was that one? <laughs> in the desert? Oh, no, it was in Lakeside. It was at Lakeside. <laughs> oh. Bro, I was like, I, I, I had even asked, hey, you got some milk or something? Like, cause I didn't know what a brownie was. Yeah. You and, just thought it was a brownie. And I ate the fucking whole thing. Oh. Uh-oh. Bro, I get home. <laughs> And I fucking turned green, bro. <laughs> like, I, I don't remember like two days after that. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. No, no, it'll take two days for that oh, to yeah, be your system. You'll yeah. green out for I a couple days, green, right? Dude. I forgot to tell you that. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Honest right. mistake. I gave Cedric half of a, of a, of a, of a, of a uh, Tootsie Roll. And I didn't see him for 45 minutes, and he came back, and he goes, bro, I'm off. He goes, I'm initiating conversations. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're someplace tennis? That's awesome. Tell me about that. I mean, my get higher. Dude, I remember I, I couldn't stop laughing. Somebody would hit a shot, I'll be fucking laughing. Ah, yeah. The fucking divot. Ah. It was hilarious. We had some great man. times, man. Yeah. Good golfer, too, and a, greater, a better dude and a better friend. I love him, man. De La Hoya. Honor and a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. Thanks for coming out. All right. Appreciate it. Time for some uh, baby dough. You can go throw some chorro. (laughs) (laughs) 